Hi everyone, it's Michael, and today we're going to be transplanting number 30 in my collection, my Cypripedium A. call to an outdoor grow environment. Now, this is uh, a bit of a contentious adaptation for me because um, one of the things I'm discovering is I want to grow orchids on my terms, my way, um, and kind of being forced out of my comfort zone of a semi-hydroponic grow setup, it usually doesn't yield as good of results for me, not because it's not a more viable way of growing them, but because um, I know what I am capable of giving in terms of care and what I'm not. And having to kind of um, invest in a more elaborate grow setup, um, one that isn't quite as intuitive or as self-sufficient as semi-hydroponics, um, means that I neglect the plants more and then they tend to do more poorly. However, I am making the choice to go ahead and adapt these guys because they are, I'm not actually sure if they're doing badly or if they're doing exactly what they should be doing. So this has been a really big learning lesson for me and a huge learning curve. The reason I have these plants is because I was on eBay looking through orchids and I said, Cypripedium may call, gosh, I don't even know what a Cypripedium is, but I know I don't have one. I need to get this. And I'll link the video below where I got them and repotted them, but I made a really, um, unsettling discovery. So these were foraged from the wild. I didn't do my research, so I didn't realize that that was a possibility. I didn't realize that people were foraging orchids. Um, but as I was waiting for the shipment to come in, I did all my research and realized, okay, well, these aren't super commonly grown in a laboratory environment. So there's a great likelihood that they're not going to do very well because they were foraged from um, pinelands in eastern North America that are specific to a very acidic grow soil. So these plants were not set up for success from the get-go. Um, but that being said, they are starting to brown, they are starting to yellow. Actually, I'll come around and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So you can see on this guy here, the leaf is starting to die back. So my initial uh, response was, okay, well obviously this is it. This is how they're going to die because they're just, you know, they're not ever going to do well given where they were taken from. But there, I did some more research. So the Cypripedium, they tend to um, send up their first shoots in the early months of spring. But in the fall through the winter, all of their old leaves die back. So they're actually kind of following the template that they would be. I'm not saying they're healthy. I'm not saying they're unhealthy. I'm saying I don't know. But here's what I do know. Where they come from, they see huge swings in temperature from spring to winter. Um, there's a big differentiation between the seasons there. So in order for these to really thrive, they need two things. Uh, they need to be able to be in that kind of a fluctuating temperature environment for the winter, but they also need to continue to receive water that has a pH of below 4.5. So I went back and forth on this a million times because again, I want to grow in my growing method. I want to grow in semi-hydroponics. So I wanted to just leave them there, but I just feel ethically unsound about just watching it die if it is in fact dying. So I'm gonna give it exactly what it should have and hope for the best. I don't know if they'll come back. <laughs> so you might be wondering, well, if they die, are you gonna do a In Loving Memory video? I don't know, and I won't know if these have actually died until spring of next year, because that's the, I mean, that's the name of the game. The old foliage is gonna die back and then if everything goes well, the new shoots will emerge in spring. So I'm going to do just that. Now, given that these come from a, um, a well-drained acidic soil, what I'm doing is I'm mixing perlite with some basic uh, potting soil, and then I'm just gonna go ahead, pot them up and put them outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the potting soil. I'm going to remove these guys from their leca pellets, and I'm gonna time-lapse all of it so you don't have to wait around while it happens. Now I'm going to begin the process of unpotting them from their leca pellets and getting them into the soil. Let's see what we've got underneath here. Okay, now this is interesting. Now, when I bring you in closer, like obviously the dead leaf isn't looking great, but there's that little, I don't even know what you would call that, a little bulb. There's just this little beacon of life that's in there, so I'm hoping that that will make a cameo in the spring and that all will be well. I just don't know. And now, so look at this guy. Look at how juicy those roots are looking. Maybe this isn't as bad as I thought it was. Huh, 
Let's keep going. All right, you guys, I've got them all repotted and I'm actually feeling way more optimistic about their fate than I was before I unpotted them from their semi-hydroponic setup and saw what was going on at the root system. There are some really promising signs of life. Um, so again, one of the non-negotiables for this plant is having a pH of 4.5 or lower. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and put them outside. I'm gonna give them some dappled shade. I mean, they, they grow on the forest floor around trees. So they get some shade, some light. They're not super picky about their lighting conditions. They are super picky about the pH content of their water. So um, the same way that I've been watering them in their semi-hydroponic environment is how I'm going to water them outside. I've been using pH down. I use this little dropper right here. Um, and then I just mix up a batch of distilled water with the pH down until I get exactly where I need to go. I usually aim for around four. And then I'm just going to go ahead and um, pour that water right over the top of these guys and hope that they make a reappearance during spring. So I will keep you guys fully posted on this. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, insights, um, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. I'm really, honestly, I'm super curious to see how this is gonna go. This is uh, not my preferred growing method and I've never done anything like this, but we will see what happens. And you can enjoy the luxury of learning from my mistakes if this is a huge mistake, or hopefully it'll just go really well and everything is golden. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for spending your time with me. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and bye.